Welcome to Return to Your Center. Greetings, blessings, and welcome. Return to Your Center. We are going to start with grounding and centering. We are going to show up in our center so that we can explore more with centering. So to start, tune into your body, breathe into your body, tune in to this present moment. Breathe in to this present moment and breathe all the way from your head to your toes and breathe from your toes to the top of your head. Bring yourself with every breath into present moment and say to yourself, I choose to be here in this moment. I choose to be here in this moment. Now, take your energy hands, lift any stagnant or chaotic energy out of your space and release it in light. Take your energy hands and release any chaotic or extra energy in your space. Release it from your aura, your body, and the room that you are in. Release it and let it go. That's good. Now we are ready. We are going to be focusing on the center. Now the center Let's just talk about what it is. Your center is the virtual space. It's not a thing. It's a way of being present. It's your vertical core. Some people call it the pillar of light. Some people call it the central channel. The central channel. It is a space that exists. It coexists where your spine is. And yet it is not the spine. Your core, your center exists at a finer frequency than your physical spine. Now, being a column, it also extends upwards above your head, and it also extends downwards beneath your feet. The energy of that core, the energy of that core that extends upwards extends to infinity. The energy of your core that extends downwards, extends to infinity downwards. Now, you are capable of making choices, and one of the most important choices that you can make regarding your center is to breathe with it and be with it and be there with it. You are coexisting and interacting with your core. So let's explore some exercises We're going to start with you breathing into your body. You are going to breathe into your body, and you are going to sense this vertical column of presence. And if it seems that you are just making it up, that is okay. It's okay if it just seems that you are making it up. Now, tune into it and breathe into it, And notice, your body and your mind are interacting with your core. Your body and your mind, with every breath, are beginning to interact, to co-mingle energy and presence with your core. That means that you are breathing some of that core energy into your mind. You are breathing some of that core energy into your body. So you are learning from the core, but the core is getting signals from your body and mind. Now let's explore why that would be. Your core is the infinite part of you. You could even say your core is your essence. Your core is you. And yet, your core, being so vast, so ancient, so timeless, and so infinite, needs to interact with your conscious mind, with your conscious intentional self. The reason that's important is because you are here in this incarnation. 
a place of space and time. It's not enough to simply tune into your core. You want to have a conversation between your core and you. So let's start with that first conversation. Tune in to that vertical core and get a sense that you are stepping more deeply into it and that you are greeting your essence, greeting your core. Now, give a suggestion to the core. Why would you give a suggestion to the core? Because the core is so vast, it is so infinite and wise, it cannot override your free will. So give a suggestion to your core, such as infinite essence. Help me to be healthy and happy in this moment. Infinite inner presence. Help me to be healthy and happy in this moment. So now we are getting some flow. That's good. Now we are getting some flow. Okay. Excellent. Now, what I want you to do, start to tap into that shift of energy that you can now feel in your body and mind. And this, by the way, is how all metaphysics works. You're always ratcheting forward. You intend something, you do it, you feel it, and you notice it yet again. And then you adjust your thinking and you adjust your focus and you adjust your presence. So step now even more deeply into that central column of presence, the central column of presence that flows through you. And if you're wondering how to step into it, you could either extend your consciousness into it, or you could imagine that you are sitting in it, or that you are breathing with it. Do be creative. So you, the conscious self, are more deeply interacting right now with your core, with every breath and stay in communication with your core. Tell your core, essence, I would like to feel your energy. Essence, I would like to feel your energy. And actually ask your essence to let that energy flow more freely through every part of your body. Envision and feel that the energy from your essence is able to flow more freely through every part of your body. Mm-hmm. Very good. Okay. That is excellent. Now, at this point, let us see how you are doing. So a question comes up, what is the difference between core and essence and soul? And why is it that they seem to be interchangeable in so many ways? The soul is the essence of you. However, the soul is so completely vast that you could say it has no specific location. You could reasonably say that the soul exists in every particle of time and space in the entire universe. So when we are going more deeply into the core within our body, we are going into the vast space of self that is specifically localized in this time-space continuum, and it is specifically localized in your body here and now. And yet, I said earlier, you're not really just going within the body. 
you are using the body as a doorway so you can focus and localize tuning into your essence. And when you tune into your essence, you are tuning into this really deep, timeless, primordial aspect of the soul. The reason we're practicing tuning into it is because soul is not simply something that floats around somewhere. The aspect of soul that we know as core or center, it's almost like a living star or a living universe that exists within you. It's so primordial. It is amazing. It can do anything, but you need to be able to be present with it in order to learn its secrets and to receive its assistance. There was a comment that is ever so true that when you tune in to your essence, when you tune into your center, you are simultaneously tuning into your spirit or soul and you are tuning in to the universe. So, It's one of those metaphysical things. All you can say about it is it is any particular thing that you happen to discover it to be, and it's also everything. Now, to continue, let us explore one of the curious characteristics of core or center. That is that it is very precisely located in this vertical column of presence in your body, And yet, when you bring your presence there, you find that it mysteriously becomes as immense and vast as the universe. Now, that sounds a little silly or overly mystical at first, but we are going to have some experiences so that we can have genuine, grounded, mystical explorations with the center. So, breathe into your body. And feel your head connecting to the body. Feel your feet and legs connecting to the body and the head. Tune into that vertical, central presence. Now, bring your attention into it and imagine that you are opening a magic energy doorway that takes you to a deeper deeper, more central, more essential place within that central channel. So you're opening a doorway in your central channel that takes you to the core of the core. It takes you to the center of the center. You're going basically deeper into that core. Deeper into that core. Mm Mm-hmm. Excellent. Now, notice what it feels like. And it might be a little vague at first because you're not used to that experience. But be with the texture of it. Feel into the texture, sense into the vibe of that deeper level of core. Mm Mm-hmm. Good. Feel into that. Now, begin to breathe with that. So how do you breathe with a deeper level of your essence? You simply imagine that the vital life energy at that deeper level of essence is a living energy, and you can breathe it. You can inhale that deeper level of essence. And so you do that. You inhale from that deeper place, And you breathe it in, and you let it circulate through the respiratory system. You let it circulate in the same way that you get oxygenated when you breathe air. You are being oxygenated by your cosmic, deep, inner center self. So just notice what happens, and it might be subtle, and it might be dramatic, but whatever it is, Have the experience. Good. Okay. Excellent. Now, 
breathing is so important because breathing is a basic central activity in this time space, in this lifetime, in this body. So when you tap into your deep center and you connect that with your breathing, especially by breathing your essence energy, you are literally bringing a deep, timeless energy in your center into the tissue of your physical body. That lets you have mystical experiences that are grounded. It's good for your well-being. It's good for your mind. And it creates more of a friendly, communicating flow between your essence and your conscious mind. Now, why do you want to have that friendly flow? Because the core is so basic and so vast and so wise, it's almost like a super mystical aspect of you. And if you don't get into communication with it, it's not able to speak very precisely. And so the more you communicate with your essence, the more easily it understands who you are in this lifetime. It understands who you are in this lifetime and what you're about and what you're needing and where you are going. So communicate with that deep level of core. But as you communicate with a deep level, you start to get an intuitive feel for what it's like to be that deep core. Because our goal here is for the depth of that core to be something that's more easily able to be known by you, something that you can use and something that you can learn from. So start to explore. I'm going to give you some little questions that you can ask yourself right now as you explore your deep presence in your center. Start to notice what is the texture. Just feel in. Sense in to that deep, deep presence, that central channel within you. Get a sense. Does it have temperature? Does it have texture? Sometimes when I feel into that space, I get a sense of something that has an echo as if I were in a vast cathedral which is not to say that it is a cathedral, but it has that reverberant, echoey vastness. Sometimes it seems dark and subdued, and sometimes it seems light. Now, to be clear, when you tune into something really primordial, there are good reasons for it to sometimes express as light, and there are good reasons for it to sometimes express almost as a velvety blackness that is like the infinite midnight. Now, light and dark at this really basic level are the same thing. And we're not talking about good and bad. It's not that. It's just that the deep velvety blackness of the infinite, it's almost like feeling into the subconscious or feeling into the infinite potential and feeling into the infinite light. That's another level of infinite consciousness. It also has something to teach you. So you can learn whatever you experience in your deep essence. So let's find out what you are experiencing. A comment came up that I'd like to speak about. And that is that, is it true that this is going to appear or feel differently to all people? Is everybody going to have a different core? And the answer is, even though there are some shared characteristics that people will discover when they talk about this or that experience with the core, everybody is having a totally unique experience, and everybody is tuning into their own essence. Now, your essence deep in your center is made of universal substance. And that's why everybody, to a certain extent, 
will have some similarities when they describe their experiences. But consider what it means to be made of universal substance. Everybody is made, yes, in the image of the Creator, as they say, but with the Creator's intention that everybody is going to have a completely unique vibration. Some people call this unique difference the soul signature in the same way that when you write your name, your signature is unlike anybody else's or your thumbprint is unlike anybody else's. So your soul signature is distinctively yours. So your exact experience with your essence will be different, and that is okay. Now, what that means, by the way, when you're studying metaphysics, if you're ever told what your center should be, what a chakra should look like, especially if you're given information that's overly precise, that there should be a certain geometric pattern in your chakra or something like that, that is a symbolic way of describing a metaphysical experience. But your actual experience is supposed to be unique because you are unique, and that's simply the way it is. Now, let's do some more core explorations. Let's tune in here and see what is needed. There are several things that I sense. First is, tune into the physical body and get a sense, okay, this is my physical body, this is how it feels. Then, tune into your deep central channel, your deep core, get a sense of how it feels, and expand your consciousness just a little bit more so that you, within your consciousness, can include the physical body and the deep core. However you want to do that. Maybe you want to extend your feelings to embrace your core and your body. Maybe you want to see it as a vertical light within your physical body. However you explore that, Simultaneously now, sense, feel, see, hear the interaction, the dynamic interaction, the energy flowing back and forth between your body and your core. Now it's dynamic interaction, so it flows in the living, breathing, real way that it flows for you. So just discover what that is. And maybe for a moment, here's a way to do it sequentially. For a moment, you bring your attention to the physical body and notice that. And then you bring your attention to the deep core and you notice that. And then you bring your attention to the physical body and you be with that. And then you bring your attention to the deep core and you notice that. And so whatever way you explore so that you come into communication between your core and your body, it gives this beautiful resource to the body. It gives the body a chance to get a reference signal from something that is timeless and deep and something that's you. Now, the reason that's so important and the reason I was guided to have something based on returning to your center is that the body is the younger part of you. Your body exists for this lifetime. And so your body, in a way, is somewhat naive and under the influence of all the things that are happening in the world, all the things in your reality. So notice what happens right now when you begin to re-reference yourself you get a reference point, and you give that reference point of center, deep center, you give it to your physical body. But tune into your physical body and get a sense that your physical body is getting a deep reference. It's almost like having magnetic attraction. 
as if there's something amazing, powerful, loving, and wise in your core. And it is attracting the attention of the physical body so that instead of being stuck on this and that in the world, the body is now going into a state somewhat like a state of meditation. It's being very present, and every cell in your body is now looking and listening to the core. Every cell in the body is feeling and sensing the core. And as it does that, you become aware there's a deeper pulse within you, deeper and more real than anything out in the world. It is not that things of this world are unreal. It is just that the reference point from your core is deeper, more real for you. It's more based on eternity. And even though it's based on eternity, it's also based on the eternal truth that truly exists in this moment. Now, let's focus on what that is like. Your body is now referenced strongly to the deep core. It's feeling that deep pulse of that timeless self, and it's feeling it right now. Talking about timeless doesn't mean all over the place. You can have timeless wisdom, timeless love and light, flowing as a vibration in the here and now. It can be happening right now. And so you feel that interaction between the here and now and the timeless and the core and the body. And you let those things fuse. You let them unite. You let them be present in your core. You feel it in your body. And you breathe that depth. You breathe that depth from your core. You breathe it in. You let it flow through your body. You realize that the deep peace, the deep vastness of the core is within you. Vast though it is. Amazingly vast and profound though it is. It is here. You can breathe it in. It is here for you, now and always. One of the, you could say, one of the tricks of being in this body, in this physical plane, is that in any given moment, you have choice. And the primal choice that you have, the primal choice is, am I going to tune into my core, or am I going to be in a sense, a tool of this world? Am I going to be an accessory of this world? And it is hoped that for your metaphysical well-being, you will choose for your primary reference to reference the deep core. When your primary reference is the deep core, you're able to get a reference point that is more true, more wise, more real, more connected to the eternal love and light that characterizes all things divine. So that divinity can be felt and experienced within. So let's find out how you are experiencing things at this point. Okay, the issue comes up for many people because of spiritual trainings that they have received. And they may have been told that their mind is inferior to spirit, or they may have been told that they, as spirits, are somehow inferior to the divinity of this universe. And so what we're dealing with here is self-judgment. And so we need to understand how can we use this infinite wise power of our central channel and why is it appropriate to use that infinite wise power as a co-creative thing, as a co-creative reality with 
our mind, our conscious self, why is it necessary to have that communication? When you are born into this body in this lifetime, you have an opportunity to learn, but your higher self or your essence cannot do the learning for you in the same way that if a parent does the homework of the child, the child does not learn, but the child can, of course, ask questions about their homework and the parents can help. So if you simply go through your life without communicating with your infinite center, your infinite center is going to be there always. It will always love you, but it cannot share very much because it exists as cosmic potential. So in order to activate the cosmic potential, there needs to be communication. There needs to be a conversation. Now, it's necessary for this deeper, infinite aspect within to know what your plans are so that it can begin to support that. And so it's necessary when you are in a body to be able to speak to your center and to say, center, this is the energy that I would like today. This is my request for today. And it's very useful with your conscious mind. It's very useful to share, this is my plan. I'm intending to do such and such. I would like assistance with that. Now, once you state what your plan is and once you have a picture of it and a general idea of it, or even a specific idea, you can let that infinite energy in the core start to flow into that project. You can let that infinite central core energy flow into your body so that you can be the living manifestation of what you are wanting. So it could be a quality. You might wish to be more happy, more healthy, more loving, more wealthy, more wise, any of these things. So whatever these things might be, when your core knows that that's what you're working with, it can start to flow that energy. Now, the reason you want to experience it deep within you is because when you experience the core deep within your body, well, your body is the part of you that you have as your way of living in this physical plane in this lifetime. So when your body is able to feel the primordial infinite vastness within you, it makes all of that vast energy much more available to your body. And your body, remember, is a part of you that's living on this earth plane. And so you actually start to create a fusion or unity, almost like a yin-yang fusion between these polarities of core and body and you actually start to build what some people call the light body some people call it the liquid light body or the body of light now the body of light coexists with your physical body body of light does not replace your physical body so when you have this infinite timeless energy and it's flowing into your cells and it's flowing into your body and it's flowing into the different aspects of your life, then you have this liquid light cosmic energy that's becoming part of your body, it's becoming part of your mind, it's becoming part of your life. And this gets back, by the way, to a question that was asked about are we allowed to make requests? You are expected to make requests. Now, of course, start with simple things. Don't make big demands because the wisdom deep within you will recognize if your demands are irrational and it could lead to some not good results. But if you have a good intention and you want some support for that, Ask for that support from the deep energy in your core. 
Now, the deep energy in the core is the essence of you. However, it's so timeless and so primordial that it's also the energy of the universe. Now, this, by the way, is not contradictory. To say that you are an expression of the universe and to say that you are a unique being is not a contradiction. It is a statement about your metaphysical nature, your metaphysical reality. So core is a vehicle for accessing your infinite nature. Now, different people experience core in very different ways, and we're going to explore some different ways of being with that. First way is to experience core as a vast presence. So get a sense that you can feel into that core and you open the doorway and you reach deeper into core and you open yet another doorway and you reach even deeper and it starts to feel lighter and even more expansive. And then once more, open magic doorway, open magic doorway to even deeper essence of essence of essence. And there's no end to the doorways because you, in your essence, are infinite. There is no final place that you will ever find in your essence. And it's nothing to be upset with because the nature of the universe is infiniteness. Everything is infinite. That is the nature of things. It's the nature of you. So when you go deeper into your essence, when you go deeper into your core, it can only be so that you're going to go deeper and discover a deeper and deeper truth. But there is no final truth there because there's ever more to discover at all times. There's never an ending to it. Now, feel the vastness. Now, here's the key to being grounded amidst vastness. And the deeper you go, the more this comes up as an issue. Vast though it is, it has a central point. And that's another way of talking about your center. Your center is within you, but your center is also the central point that you can find that seems to be the center of the vast space within you. So vast though it is, you might feel that you've stepped into an immense expanse of universe that's living inside you, and it really is living there. And yet, find a central point and be with that. Be with that central point amidst the vastness. Now realize, you can, amidst all of this vastness, be grounded. You can be looking out of your eyes. You can be listening with your ears. You can be grounded in your body. It's all easy. It's all possible. It is all doable. You can be in your body, aware of your breathing, and you can go into these vast, infinite spaces within your core. And it's safely within your body, so you are not leaving your body, you are not becoming dissociated, all safe, all good, all integrated. When many people tune into the divine, they talk about the divine as light and there's a reason for that there is a subjective experience that's very common when people are meditating where they experience bursts of light now it's not that consciousness itself is light it's just that people have the experience of light when they experience consciousness consciousness is way beyond light nonetheless we are in a body we do perceive the way we perceive and so 
we just a moment ago were experiencing space and vastness as a way of exploring the space of the inner core, we are now going to experience it as light. Now, just make this up. With metaphysics, you can imagine things. It's almost like opening a doorway. Your imagination lets you perceive in a way that, perhaps symbolic, is very helpful in understanding the metaphysical universe. So, breathe into your body. Feel your body from your head to your toes and get a sense of that vertical channel, that vertical presence of your essence. Mm -hmm. And breathe into it and get a sense that you are opening a space, except this time you're opening a space or a doorway into light. You are opening a space or a doorway in your core into the vast brightness of light, the vast radiance of shimmering, living universe of light that is within you. And maybe it seems to be only a spark at first. That is okay. You tune into that spark, reach in with your intention, reach in with your energy hands, and your energy hands are expanding and broadening that cosmic spark within your core. Now, note this next technique. It will now be familiar to you. You reach deeper into the spark, the center of the spark, and you open up a space that leads to, guess what, even more light, deeper essence of light. And then you reach even more deeply into that central spark, deep within your core, the center of the center of the center of the spark. You open up the space, you broaden the space with your energy hands. And the result of that is that you are touching the light of the light of the light that shines bright deeply within your center, your core. And remember, it's a vertical place within you, a vertical energetic presence, so you could pick any point to do that. You could do that in the locations of the upper chakras. You could do this at the middle or lower chakras. You could do this at your feet or your head. All these points are the center in spite of what different cultures around the world say, every culture has their own favorite location for the center, they are all valuable centers. They are all real centers. So you can honor them. You can honor that the upper chakras, the middle chakras, the lower chakras, your head, your feet, there is value in what you experience in the center. And the deeper you go, here's a curious paradox, the deeper you go within any location along your vertical channel, that depth proves to be deep universal essence. Now what that means is that the essence of your upper chakras is the same essence in your lower chakras, the essence in your head, the same deep essence that you find in your feet. So the light and the vastness and the love and the wisdom that you find deep in your central channel, the deeper you go, the more profound it becomes. And you realize that every place in your center is as good and as valuable as any other place in your center. Now, we spoke when we started the hour with extending up and down. Let's really get a sense of that. Now, when you sense the energy shining above your head, do not leave the body. 
Likewise, when you sense the energy extending beneath your feet, do not drain out of your body. Stay present, stay focused, be aware of your breathing in your core, in your body. Now, from that body presence, get a sense that there is extension going up and energetic extension extending beneath your feet. In the same way that if you extend your arm, if you extend your fingers, you can reach outside of a window, but you do not jump from the building. You stay grounded and safe inside the building, but you could safely reach your fingers and hand and arm outside of the window to explore the weather outside the building. So you are in the building of your body and you have fingers of consciousness, so to speak, arms of consciousness, legs and feet of consciousness that can extend down and they can extend up. Now, it's a really interesting experience when you are feeling your body and you are feeling deeper and deeper into your central channel. And then you start to extend down and you extend up. And when you do that, you really get a sense of what it means to be a centered being, but you also get a sense of what it means to be a multi-dimensional being. You are grounded, you are real, you are here, you are now. And you are vast, you are infinite, you are cosmic, and you are all these things. So the more you explore this, the more you practice and play with it, you realize that the experiences that people talk about, the mystical, spiritual experiences that so many people have described over thousands of years, they are talking about things that do exist within you. And many times they're talking about things that are metaphorical ways of talking about your essence. But they might use different terminology and they might talk about it in symbolic terms where they are talking about it in the sense of magical beings or beings who would seem to be outside of you. Now, those beings may in fact exist I'm not saying that they don't. I'm simply stating that for your metaphysical grounded study, you want, whenever possible, to really ask, well, if something is amazing and magical out there, what is the correlate to that within my own self? And being in your center is one of the most effective ways that you can explore along those lines. The reason for that is that you are made of infinite substance. So when you tune into your center, you are tuning into the infinite substance. And that is how you can learn about metaphysics. You can learn about metaphysics in a way that is based on a study of your own unique nature. You are studying your own unique nature. Let's find out what you're experiencing with that so far. The question has come up. Is it not true that each chakra is different and unique? And isn't that the reason that it's easier to access central core in one area compared to another? And of course, the answer to that is, well, even though at the deepest cosmic level, all the chakras are the same, in fact, in this body, each chakra is different, and different people have different degrees of blockage. And so, when you start to explore the core of a chakra, when you go deeply into that, you will have the opportunity to meet the blockages. But of course, once you meet them, you can talk to them and you can let them go and do some energy healing on them. Now, these techniques that we are exploring of going deep into core, as you might call it homework, you could explore each of your different chakras 
and explore going into the chakra using the techniques for going deep into the core that we were exploring this evening. And when you do that, you will find that there is depth, an infinite cosmic depth within every chakra. And it will let you have more communication and more co-creative presence with every chakra. Now, you are going to learn so much about yourself when you go to the different chakra points and when you explore your core there. Now, the reason I say that is that there's a tendency to think of chakras in somewhat stereotypical ways, somewhat symbolic ways. And so when you go to the location associated with chakras, but if you start to explore like a scientist, like a mystic scientist, if you go beyond what you've been told about the chakra and you explore the deep core essence of that chakra, you are going to discover a conversation taking place between your conscious mind and your essence at the level of that chakra. And so you will find that the vastness of your core exists at every chakra. Now, at a certain point, when you go deep enough into any given chakra, they all become, in a sense, the same because the essence is so cosmic that it's no longer expressing as a particular stereotype or a particular picture. It's just essence here and essence there and cosmic essence everywhere. And so it's just something to play with and something to explore. Now, even though I just mentioned that you discover cosmic essence everywhere when you go deeper into chakras, you are still, for this lifetime, in a physical body. And so there will be always a characteristic difference between one chakra and another because it is localized at a different part of the body. So one chakra is going to be located, let's say, where the heart is, another is located where the brain is, and yet another is located where the digestive system or the pelvis are located. So there will be a characteristic energy, but here's the curious thing. Yes, there is a characteristic energy in each location where you do the deep exploration. And yes, it will have its own flavor or character. However, it's amazing how you get beyond the stereotype. When you open up those doorways into deep essence, if you stay grounded and present with it, you really start to wonder, well, I thought this was my digestive system, but it's starting to seem like the universe. And I thought this was my brain, but it's starting to seem like the universe. And I thought this was my heart, but it's starting to seem like the universe, etc. So at a certain point, you recognize that this earth plane is sort of like a game. But there are rules for this earth plane, but there are deeper rules for the universe that in a subtle way actually override the physical plane. So something to play with. Don't get stuck on the words. The words I'm saying are designed to give you a blueprint or a template so that you can play and explore in a safe and grounded way. So let yourself discover your own way of experiencing this. And as you need to, put this into your own words. Now, let's tune into our concluding meditation for the evening. Tune into your body. Tune into the skin. Tune into the skin as a boundary for your physical body. And that, by the way, is an excellent grounding technique very useful to feel your skin because that is your boundary. And breathe into that for a moment and then get a sense of your core. 
get a sense of your core coexisting. The core is that multidimensional aspect of essence, vertical presence. And notice that, yes, your skin is a boundary to the physical body, but the multidimensional vertical energy presence coexists with it. And notice that you can go deeply into that essence. You can bring your consciousness deeper and deeper and deeper into the center, but you are still aware of your skin as a boundary. You are still aware of your body. So something that has boundary coexists with something that is infinitely deep. Now, any time you go deep in your core and it seems a bit too much or a bit too nonspecific, realize that you can always go to the central point, whatever you sense it to be, of that vast central space. So you go deep and you go deep and you go deep and you wonder, where am I? So find a point, let that be the center point of that vast inner space. And then unite that with your skin so that you are feeling a boundary. You are feeling a physical boundary. You are uniting it with that central vast point. Okay. Excellent. Very good. So you have a lot to explore. And you could call it play or you could call it work. But do enjoy and do be grounded. The more you explore your core, the more you are exploring you. And by exploring yourself at that deep level, you are exploring divine source. Infinite blessings, be well, and enjoy. Blessings to you. Thank you.